To get an idea about how multiple protocols work on the internet to enable certain internet services, a fun example is to talk about mail. Email is something you guys use all the time, something you're very familiar with, but how does email actually work? So the story of how email is transmitted across the internet is pretty interesting, and it also gives us a chance to talk about a couple of different protocols. So let's um, go back to this uh, burgeoning friendship between Greg and Ziz. So Greg has downloaded some of Ziz's pictures off her website. Um, this is my cat, by the way. This is supposed to be a cat. Um, Greg says it looks like a loaf. Um, so Greg has, has admired Ziz's pictures on her website. Now he wants to, uh, he's emailed her and said, oh, those are cool pictures. Do you have any more pictures? And of course, Ziz has lots of pictures, uh, particularly of her, her doing things she's not supposed to be doing. Um, and so she says, okay, I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna send Greg uh, an email. So how does this actually work? So the first thing to, to, to think uh, to recognize with email is that email requires communication with some sort of email server. Um, if you if you receive email at a particular email address, for example, let's say that Greg is using his uh, Greg at hotmail dot com. Ziz is uh, using her Ziz at gmail.com. These names identify the mail server. So this uh, gmail.com, it has to have a mail server that Ziz can connect to to retrieve her mail. And, and uh, hotmail.com has to provide an uh, email server that Greg can connect to. And sometimes you access these uh, using a web browser, but the, the process is basically the same. So the first thing that happens when Ziz sends an email is that there's this interaction between her computer and this gmail.com mail server. So that mail server is located somewhere on the internet. And the first thing that happens is that Ziz's computer has to tell Gmail that it wants to initiate a mail transfer, a uh, mail message to greg at hotmail.com. So that's the first thing that happens. And what's, and, and what's interesting to note is that this is not transmitting the mail. This is just telling a mail server that I want the mail to be transmitted. So this part of the interaction, there are a number of different protocols that are used here. Um, you may have heard of some of them if you had to configure a mail client. Uh, one of them is called IMAP. It's the Internet uh, Mail Access Protocol. Um, another one, an older version is called POP, which is not only a funny name for soda, but uh, stands for the Post Office Protocol. Um, there's also exchange protocols that Microsoft has developed that work here, but these protocols are designed to allow a mail client to communicate with the mail server to do things like retrieve mail, send mail, organize mail, put mail into folders, things like this. So this, uh, these protocols are uh, protocols that run between a mail client that typically runs on your computer and a mail server that you connect to that's the first step in sending mail. But when uh, Ziz's computer successfully tells Gmail that she wants to initiate a message transfer, the message actually hasn't reached Greg's mail server yet. So what Gmail will do is Gmail uses another protocol. This is called SMTP. So SMTP stands for the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. And the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol is what mail servers use to communicate with each other. So once Ziz tells Gmail's mail server, I want to send mail to greg at hotmail.com, Gmail will start the process of transmitting that message across the internet using the simple mail transfer protocol to the mail server run by hotmail.com. And this may involve several uh, attempts. You might have seen uh, messages from the SMTP protocol saying that your mail was delayed or wasn't able to be delivered. For example, the SMTP protocol allows Hotmail to say, um, you must have have a wrong, the, you must have you know, fat fingered the username because there's no user uh, called, you know, Greg the cat lover at hotmail.com. Um, and so the SMT protocol allows servers to communicate about sending mail, about um, rejecting mail if they don't know who the recipient is, things like this. So this is the core protocol that mail servers use to communicate with each other. Once the mail arrives on at Hotmail, uh, Hotmail's email server, then 
there's this extra interaction between Greg's mail client or computer and the server itself. And this is another part of these protocols, IMAP and POP, and protocols like this. They not only have to be able to allow you to send mail, but obviously you need to be able to retrieve mail. So periodically, uh, Greg's computer will communicate with the mail server at hotmail.com, and it may say, hey, you have this new message uh, from ziz at gmail.com, um, and you know, that includes some, some really cool new pictures of herself. So, so this is a, a you know, great example. It's a little complicated, but this is an example of how multiple protocols on the internet work together to do one very simple thing, allow you to send email.